that's six notes wrapping up with relationships. So we said that ecology is the study of relationships between organisms and their environment. We've talked a lot about the environment component, but not necessarily as much as the relationships with each other. And so that's what we're gonna dive in today. So first, why would organisms interact in the first place? Well, within an environment, there are limited resources to be used. So they're gonna be a lot of different ways that they're gonna interact over those resources. And some organisms may even share habitat which is the actual area where they live, including all of the living and non-living things in that given area. But another thing that causes interactions is the fact that each organism has its own niche, or like we like to say in the South, its own niche, which is all of the things an organism needs and does within its habitat. That is on its own. That cannot be shared. And both of these things lead to interactions and relationships between organisms. So we are gonna talk about some of those. So first is predation. This is more a short-term interaction than a relationship because this is when one animal kills and, and eats another for food. The predator is the one doing the hunting or killing and the prey is the one being killed or consumed as food. So there are a ton of different examples to be able to think of. Here are a few pictured for you. But one of the things that can be really helpful to look at when looking at predation are predator-prey graphs because they show excuse me, how these populations change in response to each other over time. And this has had evolutionary impacts too, which we talked about with coevolution in Unit 6. So look at this graph. It's showing how a population of predators, shown by the dotted line, and prey changes over time. And you can see how they change in response to each other. So let's look at this for a second. For example, what is happening at points A and B? So at A on the graph, what we can see has been happening is the prey population is decreasing as the predator population is increasing. That makes sense. Now look at B. The predator population has been going down because they've run out of prey. And as the predator population decreases, the prey is then able to increase. So these two um, populations are able to regulate each other, which is pretty cool. Now, a key definition I want to introduce here is one of keystone species. This is a species that holds the ecosystem together, and it's critical for the survival of the other species in the ecosystem. So oftentimes, predators get a bad rap, but they're often keystone species. Why? Because they keep the prey species from growing exponentially and growing out of control. And so there, there's this natural regulation that exists in these relationships that keeps the entire ecosystem in balance, which is pretty cool. Another relationship that um, is really significant is competition. So this is a relationship that exists between two or more organisms that are fighting for the same limited resources. And it can come in two forms. It can be interspecific, which is between different species for the same resource, or intraspecific, which is between the same species. So I think international is different nations, so interspecific is different species. Whereas intramural sports are sports in a, at a college where you're competing against other people who go to school with you within your same school. And so this is competing within the same species. That's how I remember the difference between those terms. Now, competitive exclusion principle. I mentioned earlier that no two organisms can occupy the same niche at the same time. Now, if the two, two organisms are trying to do that and they're really different, one is probably going to be a way better fit than the other, so there's just going to kind of be a natural, like, it's going to take that role. But if the organisms are really similar, what's going to happen is it's going to result in some sort of competition or fight to see who will win the niche. The loser is going to die or have to go find, move, find a different niche to occupy. And a great example of this is if you've ever seen Disney's The Lion King and how Mufasa and Simba's dad fight to be king of the pride. Um, Mufasa wins and dad dies. And then Simba and Mufasa compete for that same niche again, the king of the pride. Um, the loser Mufasa is the one that ends up getting excluded after the competition. So fighting for that one role that only one can fill. Now, symbiosis is one of my favorite things we talk about in biology because I just think it's absolutely fascinating. And it is any interaction that involves a close, physical, long-term relationship between two species. And one species has to always be benefiting. 
It's always interspecific, so it's always between two different species. Like these oxpeckers and this buffalo that have a symbiotic relationship where they're actually both benefiting from this. So that's not always the case though. As long as all it takes is one to benefit. So parasitism is one organism the parasite benefits while the other, the host, is getting harmed. So examples are like the one pictured with tapeworms in human intestines. The human is harmed and the tapeworm is benefited. Now, one key factor about parasitism is that the parasite not actually kill the host. Why? Because for this relationship to last and be long-term, each population can't have a devastating effect on the other one, or else then they would have to go find a new host. And so you want the parasite wants to keep the host alive long enough that then it can go find another home as needed. Another type of symbiotic relationship is commensalism. And this is when one organism is benefited while the other is unaffected. So it's not benefited nor harmed. One example are barnacles on mussels. The barnacles do nothing to the mussels. The mussels are completely unaffected, but the barnacles are then able to spread to different areas because they're attached to the mussels. And last but not least is mutualism. Both organisms involved benefit from this relationship and it helps both organisms survive. So one example is the clownfish and the anemone. The anemone provides protection for the clownfish and the clownfish um, you know, can attract some food and some predators for the or some prey for the anemone and also can keep the anemone nice and clean of bacteria. And I hope this was a helpful overview of ecological relationships for you.